roll. All right. I'd like to call uh, the meeting, the Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Uh, this is the October 17th, 2019 uh, Board of Adjustment meeting. Currently, we do not have a chair or vice chair, so that's the reason why I, I'm calling it to order. First order of business, uh, if the clerk would please uh, call the roll. Linda Brown. Present. Joe Elliott. Present. John Bond. Present. Okay, we have a quorum this evening. Next item on the agenda is public participation. We, haven't, we don't have any cards. And we only have one attendee. If anybody <laughs> would like to speak, please uh, let us know. Hearing none, we'll go to the next item of business. Uh, it's approval of the minute, meeting minutes of the Board of Adjustment dated August 30th, 2018. Uh, there hasn't been a meeting for over a year, so I would, uh, does any of the board members have any uh, comments regarding the, me the minutes? Joe, you were the minutes were fine. And I make a motion we approve the minutes as written. Second. Okay, call the roll. Linda Brown? Yes. Joe Elliott? Yes. John Bond? Yes. All right. So the next item on the agenda is to elect a chair and vice chair. We'll do each of those appointments separately. Do so you want I to swear me in first? Hmm? Do you want to swear me in first? Oh, we have a new member. That's right. <laughs> um, do we have an oath or? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, we can we can have you want to, we can have you sign. The, you have the oath with you. But I don't have it with me okay. and. Uh, I don't have the oath either, so we, we could we could uh, make. Well. <laughs> I state your name. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just don't have name. the I don't have the oath, so Patsy, we can pull that together maybe we can. after the meeting. Okay. okay. Um, Probably do that. We can probably look one up on YouTube. You want, me, you want to get sworn? I can. I just don't have. Let me say something. All right. I, I can. I can wing it. Okay. All right. Please. Uh. Right hand. Yeah, stand, raise your right hand. State your name. John Bond. Uh, do you solemnly swear? I do solemnly swear. That you will support, protect, and defend. That, you will, that I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution and the Government of the United States. The Constitution and the Government of the United States. And of the State of Florida. And of the State of Florida. And the City of Cape Canaveral, Florida. In the city of Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that you are duly qualified to hold office. And that I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the State of Florida. Under the Constitution of the State of Florida. And the Charter of the City of Cape Canaveral, Florida. And the Charter of the City of Cape Canaveral, Florida. And that you will. And that I will. And that I will. And faith. Well and faithfully perform. Well and faithfully perform. The duties of. The duties of. A member of the Board of Adjustment. A member of a member of the Board of Adjustment. On which you are about to enter. Of which I am about, about to enter. So help me God. Help me God. You need one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever had to wing an oath of office in the middle of a meeting. But it worked out fine. Okay. So. We need to elect a chair. Any nominees by any of the members? I nominate Joe. Okay. You want to make a motion? Can you make that in the form of a motion, please? Uh, I uh, make the motion that we nominate uh, Joe Elliott as the chair of the Board of Adjustment. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Get from you. Yeah, you're it. Your next item is uh, to elect a vice chair, and then the meet this meeting is yours. <clears throat> have, uh, nominations for vice chair. I nominate Linda. I, I I make a motion that we nominate Linda. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose. All right. Linda is vice chair. All right. So we. Don't have. Uh, we only 
only have one item of business, and that is the spe special exception. Well, we still need to, pe to uh, do the uh, minutes, I believe. Did we, do oh, did we already do that? We okay. already did the minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so the next thing, um, so we've already did the public comment also. Yes. Anybody want to say anything else? Uh, we'll move on to the one item. It's the special exception 2019-01 for commercial parking facility in the M1 zoning district as per the City of Cape Canaveral Code of Ordinances Zoning Regulations Section 110-609 for parcel number 24-37-15-00-30. And we have from City Planner's Office. Hello, my name is Brenda. Nice to meet you all. This is special exception 2019 for commercial parking facility in the M1 zoning. This is in the most northern part of the city. And you'll see an aerial before you. It's five acres. And as I mentioned previously, it's zoned M1 and it has a future land use of M1 as well. It's also in the economic overlay district. So this is a general summary. It's surrounded by other industri industrial or vacant uses. It doesn't connect to the city directly. It connects via the port. Um, it will not be noticeable from Cape Canaveral streets or other properties, and it will serve to reduce traffic entering Cape Canaveral. Um, they will be providing service to the port uh, via parking garages. And so this is another area, aerial. Um, you can see that entrance would be through George King via Columbia Road. And then we have a rendering of the proposed project. So it would be a one-story building, um, and they are required to apply and receive site plan approval as required by city code. Access, as I said, would be via Columbia Road, and a condition of the approval will be that the applicant will have to modify the configuration of the parking facility at his cost when Columbia Road is extended south. Got, uh, this is a stormwater plan. Are, are they going to, um, are they just gonna do a, 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 a retention? Or are they gonna do exfiltration or anything? They, is, there, is there a place for retention? Or are they going to use that pond? Um, I mean, because that's Im impervious. I'm not 100% certain. The applicant isn't here, so I can't answer that right now. Yeah. But it's going to need to conform to all of the city codes. So. Right. And when it goes through site plan approval, I imagine that it will meet all those requirements, stormwater, okay. all of those things. All right. Brenda, can I ask a question sure. on the last Render, picture rendering you showed. Sure. Is that actually the way it's going to look? Asphalt, the building like that. That's the what nice they're fence. That's what they're proposing. Okay. Mm -hmm. The building will have restrooms and that type of facilities. There will be a restroom. Mm -hmm. And in your packet um, that you guys got, attachment three, it kind of gives you the justification, and mm -hmm. then it breaks down what they're planning to do for restroom facilities. Okay. Then on the stormwater uh, to the south east, there's a, I guess that's a retention pond there already. And that does belong to Martin Marietta. Yeah, that, that's another piece. Okay. That's a separate. Okay. And so these are the elevations of the proposed uh, one story building. And then they are proposing some canopies as well. Hmm. Canopy for the parking? For area? parking, yeah. And that's all I've got. <laughs> okay. What about the, I thought I saw somewhere in the packet, it talked about um, if the road was to be an extension of, um, of Columbia. Right. So how is that going to work? So um, 
I'm not 100% sure on those plans. I just know it's a condition of the approval. And it did go through P&Z approval on August 21st, so I believe they discussed that. Um, staff is recommending approval. And so subject to the following conditions, I think sort of answers your questions. The applicant at his cost is going to reconfigure the parking lot to include utilities and drainage to accommodate any future southern extension of Columbia Road through the subject parcel. And the applicant is also at their cost, shall relocate any site improvements to accommodate legal use by adjacent property owners of the 20-foot ingress-egress public utility and drainage easement located in the northwest portion of the property. Um, are there plans to, what? Uh, can you sp speak to what the plans are to extend that Columbia? I, ca I can't. Uh, I don't have the applicant, so I'm not sure on the details on those. It's been proposed for 10 years, but yes. there's no plan. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if it was one of those type of improvements. I also have a question since the sure. fire department's right there are they going to install emergency lights for stopping traffic so the fire engines can come out I don't know that was actually one of sure. my questions <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's important that. yeah um, I imagine that they'll have to do what they need to do as far as meeting those criteria um, if people are entering and, and exiting via George well, King in Columbia. We can tell you that we have gotten assurances and things have never happened unless we actually right, specify so, that it has to be done. Yeah, we could, you know, should it get approved, uh, one of the conditions for approval might just simply be that the fire department uh, in that particular location is, you know, Dave Sargent gets to sign off on all this. And I believe if it goes through our site plan approval process, he would be looking at it. The fire would be. He knew as nothing well as about a, it when I talked yeah. to him today. Okay. And they have an average of eight calls a day. Hmm. Where is it located on the on the map? Okay. The fire station. Uh, right here. Um, this is the tower where they the do tower, the burning, right. and then that's the, um, that's the fire state. department right okay. there. My my big. The only real concern that I had was uh, going north on Columbia. If a ship comes in and you've got cars stacked up waiting for the light, mm -hmm. we just need to make sure that there's space for the uh, the apparatus to get down beside them. Mm -hmm. Right. They need turn lanes or something for the fire trucks. Yes. Yes. And uh, and I think there's probably enough room. You know, they can certainly go down the left side, but. Um, you know, if if it comes down to it, I'll make I will make a uh, a proposal that we make that a condition that uh, and it will have to be signed off by the fire department regardless. So, you know how many parking spaces they plan on having? I don't have that number. No. And the going back to the rendering the. Rendering mm -hmm. the lighting on there, um, that is a turtle zone. I don't see any lighting there at all. They'll have to light it because they that's to, a they very... They light it light yeah. it appropriately, but I'm not sure that's close enough to be considered. It is. Um, it is in a turtle zone. Okay. But they would have to meet those requirements. Yes. Though, right? So, have to be um, shielded lighting. On our report? Oh, on there. That's what I was looking for. Mm hmm. And then it says that they'll only operate during daytime hours. There's going to be no lighting in the evening? Well, it says no light poles are proposed and it will be just downcast lighting. Right, but then the, the last sentence, uh, the proposed development will only operate during daytime. Right, the development, yeah. but I don't so, know if that speci yeah. specifies the lighting. For, se okay. for security, they will have to have some type of Something. lighting, but it will be on the, um, it will be probably no higher than 12 feet. Okay, since there are no sewers there and they're going to use that fast or something, Yeah, fast. Biomicrobics fast system. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are there plans to bring sewers there? Are we waiting for that other property to develop before sewers are brought in there? I think that might be the idea, but I think it's, um, it might say that in the packet. Also, are we requiring them to put money into escrow to take care of these things when it comes time? I'm not sure I understand the question. Where, see, the way I look at it is they're putting their property there, but we're, they're not required to do any improvements to the road going in, the sewer system, and we're saying, you know, fine, go right ahead. Well, they would, through the site plan process, they would be required to go through permitting as well. So it, it would meet all of those things, I imagine. But if we allow them to do this and sewers come in and they say, hey, this has worked great, we don't have to put sewers in. What's our recourse? I am not sure. I would, well, doubt, I would doubt that the sewer would be a, um, a big impact because you're only talking about a couple of bathrooms and maybe a sink. And it, it would likely just, uh, we'll have to find out. I mean, it's going to have to pass, any, any type of sewer is going to have to pass uh, code. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it may even connect it with a, a, uh, a structure or infrastructure on port property. But either way, whether it's port uh, or the city, it's going to have to meet code. I, I agree with that. But also, I see what's happening on the... Indian River and we're saying, you know, uh, let's give these guys a pass. Well, if the sewer comes in, they'll have to, they either, do they have to hook up at that point? Isn't that part exactly. of that process? And that's number yeah. seven. Well, the, the hookup of the sewer, if, if sewer becomes available sometime in the future, the, this property would be subject to um, um, the service availability requirements that are set forth um, under state law and uh, local law to the extent um, we have a law on when, when service becomes available. So th that I think is going to be addressed so they can by law. Continue with the, this <coughs> it's a commercial, it's a commercial establishment. So if the rules require when, ser when sewer service becomes available as a commercial establishment, if the state law or local law requires hookup within a certain time of becoming available, then they would have to hook up as a matter of law. Um, you know, residential is treated a little bit differently. That's why mm -hmm. you have so many residential septic tanks, even though sewer is technically available. That's another issue I think the legislature has been wrestling with in recent years because of what we've been dealing with, with the lagoons. So um, I, I think for now, given the, I guess the, the limited use of this property. Mm -hmm. uh, the applicant is claiming, and I don't want to speak for the applicant, but it's in their report, that the system that they're proposing, the self-contained system, is more than adequate to serve the two toilets that will be on the, on the premises. And the system is approved by the Brevard County Health Department in the, and uh, FDEP for the That's time true. being. Um, but we can deal with the... Um, I don't. I don't know. I think the they said there is water and FPL service. Coke, yeah, it would at be the city property. of Coco and FPL, I believe, out there. Yeah, I would imagine it's city of Coco. Mm -hmm. It's got to be city of Coco because right. city of Coco okay. provides I didn't service. It and I was just wondering. Mm -hmm. How many spaces did you say they're going to have there? Um, I don't know if I have that number. It might be in the packet. No. Five point one acres. It went, it went to the Planning and Zoning Board, I think, for, was it site plan recommendation? On August 21st, yeah, they reviewed. I was and at I that meeting, and I think that, that number was, was, was presented to the P&Z Board, but it's not, not in the package. Um, some of the, some of the uh, parking spaces, if I recall the testimony that night, um, are really just temporary because in the event uh, was a Columbia Road that's extended mm -hmm. uh, their intent is to remove um, the parking spaces in that area because it's gonna have to be retrofitted for a road so the number of parking spaces will, will go down right. when the road okay. is constructed 
there is an in, uh, there is an easement or a roadway easement um, that goes across the property. Uh, that what that issue was addressed at the PNZ meeting, um, but they 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 claim that that will be addressed in the future if the road comes. The parking spaces have to go. They have to reconfigure, and they're I remember the testimony. They're prepared to do that um, at that time, but in the meantime, they'd like to make full use of that area for available parking. Hmm? It may never happen. Who knows what the yeah. future holds. <laughs> the other question uh, I have more. is it says mainly cruise parking. Mainly cruise parking. Does that mean if the port has some car show, they're going to open up their parking area? And then it's not just, see, I know these are I not know, questions I, I know, I'm not the applicant, so I can't. <laughs> yeah. So that means... Um, he says it's going to be Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Is that going to change when the other cruise terminal is gone? I mean, is, is you know, I know it's further away, but people are always looking for cruise parking. I can't speak for the applicant, I but I imagine that they would adjust their schedule depending on what activity is happening in the port. The special exception that they requested is, a, is a approval for a commercial parking facility. Mm -hmm. So the code doesn't limit the parking facility to just cruise. Mm -hmm. So you should presume that if the board grants the special exception that they would be able to uh, use, use the property for all kinds of commercial parking to the extent that there's a demand. Can we limit the days at, or the hours of operation? They say the proposed hours are 9 to 3. Can we have that as a stipulation? That I think that will, be, that will take care of itself because you, you only have certain hours of the day that people embark and disembark. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. but I'm, on uh, Linda's point is that they're going to have a big festival there. they got a concert or whatever. It goes late at night. Hey, you could come over here and park till 10 or 11, whatever time it is. So if we limit their hours, then that puts it more to only cruises. Mm -hmm. And even so, though they say here. Well, they, this is going to be long-term parking anyway, so there probably won't be any, any, any spaces available because most of, the, most of the ships that leave from the south side are going to be seven-day. Yeah. But uh, that's, just my, that's just a thought. The uh, Discovery Road, one of the things that when I visited that property that I noticed is that the, uh, all those aggregate trucks um, come in and they leave on Discovery in the top, in the northeast corner of this property um, is where the trucks turn into the uh, Martin Marietta plant. And so I'm assuming that uh, they're either gonna have to cut that corner off or they're going to have to reroute the uh, the trucks coming in over to uh, Atlantis. So the way this looks, it looks like it does take over that, yeah. and I can't believe they would. Yeah, because the trucks come in yep. right here. Mm -hmm. So um, that can be addressed by the the city and the port. I'm not worried about that too much. I'm just curious. Right. Once they have their asphalt, their fence, and everything, the trucks yeah. are going to go through there. Yeah, because they're going to have to have a, an agreement uh, with uh, Martin Marietta, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Where are my notes? All right. Any other questions or comments? And, um, I wish the applicant was here. Yeah, no kidding. Um, let me make sure I don't have any more questions. I did make some notes. There is a, um, for lack of a better term, a swale or a ditch that runs along the, the entire length of the south side that goes over to that retention pond. Um, does anybody know who that belongs to? Does that belong to that, um, the port property or is that part of this, this piece, this parcel? Do you know? I'm not and, sure. And how are they going to deal with that? And then, um, of course, it'll have to have a retaining wall along the north side. And uh, is this where they were talking about putting in one of the hotels?
hotels in this area here? Um, I believe so. I think so. But that would be, that would, Columbia would have to go through there then. To the south of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that is, the parcel to that south is, is the, uh, is, is Port Authority property. So it's, and it does not belong to the city. Um, the parcel, the little parcel to the west belonged to, to something called Port, Port Hospitality LLC. I, I tried to search them down, but I have no idea who they are. They're, um, I think it's, you're right, John. I think the property to the west of this property, at one time there was discussion of um, putting a hotel on that site. The, there is a, um, I believe there's a sewer security agreement um, that the city council and the property owner entered into. Um, in the event that that property does get built for, um, as a hotel, uh, they're required to hook up to um, city sewer. And there's, there's terms and conditions in that agreement that would address that. The sewer connection would basically come off of uh, A1, uh, A1A and tie into a lift station near the racetrack. Mm -hmm. um, that, was, that was part of the agreement. Or alternatively, there's a regional lift station down near Imperial, which may be um, a, a future hookup uh, location for sewer for the hotel if it ever gets built one day and that would answer your question about when the sewer um, becomes available there there is so I'm, I'm just saying that there is an agreement out there if the property to the west uh, gets developed in the future okay, and Columbia Road belongs to the port I believe that yes is correct. that's correct so mm -hmm. can we require I mean we can't require them to do upgrades to that it's not no. within our city no but now back to the fire department, if we can't require upgrades to that road, how is that going to impact? But I'm saying, I mean, this is. <laughs> it, the it's, uh, city fire department or? Yes. I, I imagine it would be Canaveral Fire Rescue. Yes, Canaveral yeah. Fire yeah. Rescue, and they, have, they provide service jointly to the city and the and port. The port. That station, I, I believe, is, is used to run calls in, in the city of Cape Canaveral as well as the port. Yep. You are correct. Columbia Road is a, is a port road uh, that falls under the jurisdiction of the port, not the city of Cape Canaveral. Um, but it's the only access to uh, this property yeah, because there's no, there's no city road leading to this property to the south, and there's no access from A1A. So. Mm -hmm. All roads lead through George King and, and, and poor other port roads to the property. I'm going to um, say something that I'm going to make a motion. And I'm not a big fan of um, cruise parking in general uh, for a variety of reasons. However, every petition uh, must be weighed and decided on its merits. And I cannot think of a better place to have cruise parking than this particular uh, parcel because it, it really is not going to serve much of a purpose for anything else. And uh, because it's just, uh, uh, as a former developer, it, it, it's you're very limited as to what you can do with this. Mm -hmm. And so I am going to make a motion that we approve this exception with the, the two uh, conditions that staff recommends and I'm going to add one and that is that the uh, the fire department uh, weighs in and signs off on the uh, ingress egress on Columbia uh, Columbia for multiple oh. reasons yeah All right, we have a motion we have a second. I'll make a second. I second the motion. All right. Motion and second to approve with the two stipulations and an additional stipulation to have the fire department 
or this one station, I'm assuming, sign off on this um, on this ingress, ingress egress to and from the parking area. So do we have any other discussion? Not for me. We'll call for a vote. All in favor? Uh, vote. You did vote, Patsy. Joe Elliott? Four. Linda Brown? Four. John Bond? Four. Pass. So that is all we have on our agenda today. Comments? Yes. So we further motion of do we'll adjourn or get a motion to adjourn i make a motion that we adjourn at 6 32 p.m second all in favor aye 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 adjourn thank you <laughs>